Hello guys, happy Tuesday. It's Ms. Bland jumping on with Tuesday's lesson. I hope you're well and I hope this video finds you in great spirits. We are going to get started so that you can get started. Happy Tuesday. Ms. Bland is of course showcasing Tweety this week. So here's Tweety. What a good morning for you all. Or good afternoon, depending on what time you're watching this. Remember your virtual rules. Some of the rules which don't apply to you guys, but do apply to the entire class. But the one of listening and doing your best applies to everyone. This week, Ms. Vester has us working on our social and emotional goals. And for week five, we are talking about sportsmanship. And we want to talk about what it means to be a good sport. So you know Ms. Vester loves her Howard Wigglebottom books, and Ms. Bland loves them too. So today she's given us a book entitled Howard B. Wigglebottom learns about sportsmanship. Winning isn't everything. These are things we're going to think about as we read. Was Howard a good sport in the book? How did Howard's friends feel when he wasn't a good sport? And what would have happened if Howard continues to be a bad sport? Let's see what happens. Turn your listening ears on. Howard D. Wigglebottom didn't like to lose. He just had to be the best at everything. At the fair, Howard won the seed spinning contest. He won the sledgehammer. Bad pie eating contests. He won the skateboard. Trampoline. And dunk the clown contests. As long as Howard came in first, he was happy. But no one can come in first every time in everything. Once when Howard came in second, he threw a temper tantrum and kicked his second place trophy. Howard even cheated friends to win. When his soccer team made it to the finals, he told himself that coming in second is not okay. Winning meant everything. He was going to see to it that his team won. When the big day arrived, Howard yelled at his teammates if they made mistakes. He was a ball hog and wouldn't share. Howard tripped a player on the other team just as he was about to score a goal. Time out, Howard. Then he talked back to his coach. Howard called the other team's players bad names. He was taken out of the game. Howard, this is not okay. You need to learn about sportsmanship and being a team player. You're making poor choices and don't deserve to play. Howard was the captain of the team and best player. He begged the coach. Coach, the team needs me to win. Please put me back in. The coach shook his head no. Sometimes there are more important things than winning. Not for Howard. They'll lose without me and the coach will be sorry. Howard watched his teammates cheer each other on. They treated the coaches, referees, and each other with respect. An upset dad was yelling at the referee. Howard watched as the man was asked to leave. Do I look like that? In a flash, he understood how badly he had been behaving. He 
He felt so embarrassed and ashamed. Please, coach. I don't want to be like that, dad. Please put me back in. I don't want to let the team down. The coach nodded yes, and Howard ran to join his teammates. The score was tied with one minute to go. The crowd was cheering. Howard had the ball and a chance to score the winning goal, and he stopped. Instead, he passed to a teammate who took the shot and missed. Then the other team got the ball and scored the winning goal. Howard's team lost. After the game, Howard proudly accepted his team's second place trophy. He smiled and shook hands with the captain of the winning team. Good job. With a wink, he said, We'll get you next time. Howard, you can be very proud of yourself today. You learned about sportsmanship and were a good team player. Howard was very happy. This second place trophy meant more to him than all his other trophies put together. All right. So Howard had to learn a very important lesson about being a good sport. Look at these questions and think about them. Talk about them with mom and dad. We talked about them in the big group this morning. I was here to do so. All right, so what did Howard learn? Well, the group decided this morning that Howard learned a lesson about sportsmanship. He learned that winning isn't everything. So open up your notebook, put today's date at the top, and please get this sentence copied down. You can also down below that put the announcement for today that said that our ABC order for Seesaw was in Seesaw for our spelling words today. Pause here to get this copied. Awesome job. Today, of course, we are in week five. We did make sure that you noted that on the spelling word to add the E to slide, that we have eight vocabulary words, and that if you read an epic book this week, that you will color a gumball. Today, for your fluency, you are to read the passage, color in the smiley face for Tuesday, and answer the question for Tuesday that says, why couldn't Kate concentrate what was on her mind? Letterland this week deals with the long A and I sounds. As you look at your words, we have mistake, a, we have wh I, long I, that E of course does not say anything. It's a super E. It's silent but gave all its power to the I to make that I sound. Wh I, I, sn, a, I, gr, Aid in I'd tr aid dr ag our only short vowel word r i t sh a p s i l very good those are your words for this week make sure you're practicing them daily for your test on Friday ABC order looks like this inside of seesaw. Sylvester says, place your spelling words in ABC order, and Tweety is waiting on you to do so. It's reading time. Turn with me, please, to page 70 in your reading book. While you're turning, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to find when we get there. How do we care for animals is our essential question. We have two stories this week. The first story that we're focusing on right now is taking care of Pepper. That's our focus for today. Our essential question is how do we care for animals? We talked about that the animal needs of this little hamster are not the same as Pepper's, but that they all do need something. We have eight new vocabulary words for this week. You are studying each of these words every night, but you're also seeing them daily in your story inside of those yellow boxes. Look at those words and pay close attention to them as you read. Narrative nonfiction. That's our genre for this week. It means that our story is real. Jack and Pepper are both real horses and real kids. And more importantly, that the story is told by a narrator, which means it happens, but someone else is telling the story. That happens in our story. That's narrative nonfiction. 
We're gonna ask and answer some questions. Who, what, when, where, why? At the end of the story, you should be able to answer all five. And we're gonna be retelling the story this week. We're talking about being able to retell it in our own words. So taking care of Pepper. Let's read. I think I clicked on that. Genre, narrative nonfiction. Taking care of Pepper. Have you ever been on a farm? Jack lives on a farm. He has a horse named Pepper. Jack helps take care of Pepper. Looking after a horse is a big job. A horse has many needs. There are a lot of things a horse must have to live. It's Every morning, out. Jack wakes up at 5 o'clock a.m. He and his father go to Pepper's stall. The stall keeps Pepper safe from bad weather and other dangers. When Pepper sees Jack, the horse gets excited. Jack smiles when the horse gets all worked up. First, Jack gives Pepper hay to eat. While Pepper eats, Jack cleans Pepper's stall. He shovels out the dirty hay and sawdust. Then he puts down fresh padding. Pepper stop. Next, Jack strokes Pepper's brown coat and it feels smooth. Then Jack leaves to go to school, but his work is not done. At three o'clock p.m., Jack rides the bus back home. He has a snack and does his homework. Next, his mother gives him an apple for Pepper. Then they go to visit Pepper. Jack feeds Pepper hay and fresh water every day. Jack and his mom find Pepper in a field. Pepper is allowed to roam. He can walk all around the field. He was drinking after having wandered the field. All that walking here and there made Pepper thirsty. Now it is time for Pepper's exercise. In the wild, horses run many hours a day, but Pepper does not live out in nature. Jack must make sure Pepper gets the exercise he needs. Pepper must have exercise each day. Jack puts the saddle on Pepper. He places the bit in Pepper's mouth. Mom does the same thing with her horse and they ride horses together. When they are finished riding, Jack grooms Pepper. He brushes his mane, tail, and fur. Finally, Jack gives Pepper more hay and refills his water bucket. See you in the morning, Jack says. Pepper nods his head as if to say, Yes, I'll be waiting. Jack's dad checks for rocks in Pepper's hooves. If he sees one, he must get it out. All right, very good, guys. That's our story for this week. So then we looked at our study guide this morning, and we talked about some things there. The top part of your study guide, the boys and girls work together, and we talked about some things about Pepper versus wild horses. We said that Pepper lives in a stall, whereas wild horses live in the woods. And we talked about that Pepper was trained. He knew how to nod and stomp. But wild horses need training. They don't know how to do those things when they see someone coming. We talked about, but some things are the same. Their needs, they have a lot of personal needs. Water, food, hay, something to eat and drink. Those are needs. Those are things that are the same for both. The next question said, how does the caption on page 75 help you understand the picture better? It talks about dad looking for those rocks in Pepper's hood. It's important that dad checks because he needs to know and make sure that there's nothing that's going to hurt his foot while he's out on his rides with Jack. Pause here to copy this down. And the other question on this page is what does Jack do right after he finishes riding Pepper? He grooms them. And we had, I had the kids go back on page 75 and tell me the three things that he grooms 
or parts of pepper that he groomed. And they wrote those in as well. So turn back on page 75 in your book and find what parts of pepper he had to groom and write those down below. One, two, and three should all fit right there. Pause here to complete. The next page is the you do. You will complete this page alone. Please use your textbook to find text evidence answers that go along with the questions that are given. Yesterday in your notebooks, you glued down your subject and predicate grammar page. Now I need for you under those flaps to write down some real quick and important notes. We talked about this one that the subject of our sentence is who or what the sentence is about. It says that on the flap. In that flap, I want you to give some examples of subjects. It could be about a cow. It could be about a boy, maybe a girl or even a school. But the key word that you're gonna put that big pretty circle around is the word noun. A noun is a person, a place, a thing, or an animal. And that's going to be the subject of our sentence. A person, a place, a thing, or an animal. Then under a predicate, we're gonna talk about the action part of the sentence. What happens? Sleep is an action. Run is an action. Eat is an action. Drive is an action. Those action words are called verbs. Write the word verb and put that big circle around it as well. Actions are verbs. And in a sentence, we're gonna have a predicate which tells us the action part of our sentence. And I gave a sentence of example. The pig eats blue apples. The subject of my sentence is the pig. And the predicate part is he eats blue apples. Pause here to copy this down and make sure your flaps are glued in correctly from yesterday. It's break time. If you need to stretch, get some water, or do any personal events, you are welcome to do those here. If you don't need to, then we will proceed directly with math. Pause here if you need to do any personal events. It's math time. For math, we are working in module one, lesson seven still, and we took some notes today. Big kids take notes. Why do they take notes in this plan? They take notes so that they can see how something is done and then they can do it following that same process. Ms. Bland knows yesterday we talked about drawing the picture and finding our answer. Well, today, Ms. Bland beefed it up just a little bit and we actually used the equations. So I gave you some steps. First, we're gonna find our 10. So we found 10, 12 was 10 and two. We're gonna subtract with 10. So I subtracted 10 minus eight. And then I'm going to add my two to my two and got four. Copy down this page in your notebook as part of your notes. Great. Now, here's the second page of your notes. Copy these down as well. Pause here to copy. All right, Ms. Bland will walk you through two just to make sure we're on the right track. So let's try one. Let's see. Hmm. Let's do 18 minus six. If I had 18 minus six, my first step was to find my 10. 10 and eight. 10 and eight make 18. Then I'm going to subtract 10 minus six equals four. Then I'm going to add four and eight is 12. So 16, 18 minus six is 12. Let's try another. Let's say 15 minus nine. Fifteen, we know, breaks apart to ten and five. Next, I'm going to subtract ten minus nine, which is one. And then I'm going to add, oops, sorry about that. Five plus one is six. Please check your paper to make sure you saw my process. You are welcome to add these to your notes or just use them as examples as needed. Your choice, pause here if you need them. Now in your notebook, 
I ask that you complete in your packet, excuse me, ask that you complete the page that has the two questions on it before you turn to the next slide. Try them by yourself and then turn to my next slide to see if your answers match mine. Pause here to complete those two. Here are my answers. Do your answers match my answers? I hope that you came up with eight for both of those questions. Your answer should have been eight for number one and eight for number two, but what you added and subtracted together was different. But your answer for both should be eight. Check your paper against my paper to see if your answers match. Great job. Your you do for today is page 93. You are going to complete this page as part of your independent work. Make sure that you take your time, follow the examples, and do it the way that we've done it today in order to make sure your answer is correct. It will be important for us as we start them harder numbers tomorrow. On the back of that, there are two word problems. Please be sure you complete both. All right, that's all folks. So for Tuesday, you have no work in your notebooks for today. Notebooks for today are finished. In your packet, you have your taking care of pepper questions and you have your math sheet that should be completed. In the orange cover, you have your one question of the day, which was why couldn't Kate concentrate? Think about what was keeping on her mind instead of concentrating on school. And in Seesaw, you have three activities. Sylvester and Tweety are waiting for you to come over and do ABC order. There's a vocabulary match that only has four of your eight words. And then there's subject and predicate where you're going to circle your subject and underline the predicate in each of those sentences using your pencil or your highlighter. Seems like a lot, but all of it should be fairly quick and you should be done really soon. If you have questions or things that you don't understand, please always reach out to Ms. Bland so that she'll know and be able to help you. It is my hope that you will be able to finish all of this work quickly and easily and not have any concerns. But as concerns come up, just let Ms. Bland know. Have a great afternoon and a great day. Parents, couple of announcements to you. Um, tomorrow, we will be working offline for the 12 o'clock hour. So if your child needs some additional seesaw activities or something to do, I am going to be uploading those for, spe for specific children on an individual basis. So if you would like something additional in Seesaw for tomorrow, please just let me know and I will get that uploaded for you. Um, testing, um, please try your devices with the directions I sent. If the directions just simply blow your mind or you find that they do not work for your device, we do have some options for bringing the kids in to test here. Um, transportation will be on you. You will have to leave them for about two hours um, to get the testing completed, but that is an option. Um, we have days and times that that is available. Um, so please let me know if there's a way that we can help you to get that done and reach out. Um, we've had tons of success with some of the upper grade kids doing it at home, so it is possible. But if you have found it to be a struggle, there are some options for getting it done here. So let us know, let us know how we can help. Let us know how we can assist. And I hope you have a great afternoon. Always contact with me with questions. Have a great one. Air hugs and kisses and all my good wishes from Miss Bland to you.